Well, it looks like well, it looks like we have the full moon going on tomorrow. Now, somebody, I don't want to mention who emailed me about the lunar cycles and seems very knowledgeable. He seems very knowledgeable about the lunar cycles and the market changes. Tomorrow it is a full moon. Does that mean silver's going to start dropping again? Who the hell knows? Good because it doesn't make any sense fundamentally. But uh, I'm going to say this. You know, I saw actually saw a silver uh, futurist, Joe. He talked about... Um, you know, people going all into silver. You know, that's something I was against from day one. You don't go 100% into anything. But going mostly into it is, well, it's risky. It's risky, but you got to have, you know, the power to outlast the downturns, you know, before you actually do the final sell, that type of deal. You know, that's why I would say you don't necessarily have to keep buying on the dips. But uh, the same person that, I don't even know if I should mention who it is or what, but the same person that talked to me about, you know, the lunar cycles and everything, you know, forecast a 1950 price, possibly. And, you know, looking back on the charts, we hit 1950 in 2009. We've hit it in uh, 2008 and twice in 2010, kind of close to each other. So, you know, I could very well be, who knows. Um, but uh, I'm going to say this, you know, I think people really should mostly go into silver, mostly. Should go into silver pretty heavy. I know Mark Farber is a guy that's not, he's 25% into gold. And actually he's like considered a real bold gold bug. And, you know, usually he'll tell people to put about 10% of their portfolio into gold or whatever, maybe more. I'm going to say actually for the average middle class person probably should put more into at this price. It's like, uh, it's going to actually play out. And the thing is, I don't trust the fiat paper system. And I just want to point out something real 101 common sense. Where did the fiat paper system actually derive the idea or come from? It was in China. In China. In China, actually, um, they came up with it. Like, the Europeans were surprised. He goes, how do you get people to accept paper as money? And they said, well, it's easy. You know, if they accept it or they die. <laughs> Basically, they did it by the sword or the gun or whatever force that's why they accept that's how they accepted it so i also have to say this with silver and if you're going to use this as money stick with your second amendment rights and your bill of rights and civil rights of all people because um when they're taking when they're actually dictating that a hunk of paper you can just draw something you know you can say you know here's we got a paper with like little cartoon characters on it or something you know say for instance you know i drew on here this is worth you know three buildings and, you know, 15 uh, cars or something, you know, um, and said, yeah, this paper is now worth that. Yeah, that's basically kind of what, you know, putting it super simplistically and maybe non-eloquently, but it's an effect what the fiat dollar is. You know, it's backed by something because people are actually willing to work for it. That's why it's backed by something. It actually has no intrinsic value. I guess that's the classic economic 101 uh, it, it, you know, definition of money, it has no intrinsic value, but, you know, um, I think there is going to be some serious, because they can pull the plug on the system anytime they're, you want, they want, and considering that the elitist don't really have any um, thought about eliminating the middle class or depopulating the world, you know, I think you're better off sticking with assets that you can actually own yourself and actually have the means to protect them because um, the plug can actually, you know, just as surprised as some people are in the silver community, I know some weren't, some were, some are perma bears, some are perma bulls, but I was, I just, correction period surprises me how long it's going on, actually, to tell you the truth, but what could actually happen, though, is you never know what could even happen in other markets. It could very well be that there could be a complete reversal of events. Gold and silver can go way up from here. And, you know, not right away, but then you might see the bond market tank at one time, the equities and things like that. People are all smug and happy in right now. And I can actually see that a hell of a lot easier than I could, um, you know, the silver. Because basically what we have with the IRS and, you know, the uh, fiat, per, uh, fiat, fiat type currency it's basically a Karl Marx type system. So for those people who are anti-silver and believing in a fiat currency, Karl Marx, you can have May Day. It's coming up here real soon. May Day, you're a communist and what the hell. But, <laughs> you know, the thing is, the only way the fiat money system really is enforced 
is through force. That's really what it is. It's not like people, people are willing to accept it because they know right now they can buy something with it. But, you know, a lot of people, uh, if you look back, even in Russia, what happened, which is actually more stable nation than, say, other nations than Zimbabwe or something. But look what happened to their money over the last century. It basically got devalued greatly. Oh, like more than 10 times, I believe it was. You know, so like if you, if they had, somebody had silver back in 1900 in Russia, and they had silver today, they'd be sitting pretty. Over the long, long haul, it's the thing to keep. You know, you know, some people like to to uh, compare the bubble top of $50 almost back in 1979 to the price it is today, and you lost money. I guess you would have lost money if you bought it on the bubble top, but I plan to be selling it at the bubble top and, you know, will possibly, uh, but I will not keep fiat cash. I will actually go into hard assets. And, you know, one of the things that might be a big generator of money, it could be even real estate or land or rental properties. It could very well be. So, but, you know, nobody ever really, and nobody in the business actually keeps gobs of fiat cash on hand unless it's in a financial instrument that's generating some type of interest or revenue. But, you know, let me put it this way. The reason the wealthy do not go too much, especially into silver, is that they got too much wealth. When you're talking about all the billions of net worth that's out there, just of individuals, how could they possibly go into silver? They couldn't. There isn't enough silver around. It's a simple, simple equation. It's just way too much money out there. So, you know, some of the stuff that Lindsey Williams talks about, I know he's a little bit of a crackpot in some ways, but I have to say that, you know, if there's a real financial calamity that people can't really fix right away, I mean, they will fix it eventually, there's going to be a lot of lost wealth that's basically represented on paper. And uh, that is one reason I think Mark Farber, see, I, don't, see, I, don't, I don't see Mark Farber as a, as a gold pumper at all. I think he's just protecting himself. Uh, you know, he's, you know, let me put it this way. When you're a gold pumper or you're a silver pumper, you might be moving in and out all the time. Farber, I think, is just buying it, buying it every month. Not so much as a speculative bet, but he, he, he expects at one point to be that there would be a catastrophic problem in the financial system. And when that occurs, you're SOL if you're in a lot of other things. You know, and, and Baron Barnhart talks about, you know, that's why she quit to be in, being a broker. She doesn't trust the system. So, you know, we might be seeing this downturn right now, but it's not going to be... Actually, your gains might be absolutely stellar. They might be. They might be ridiculously good. Silver can easily go up to the 150 or more, and it could maybe spike to hundreds of dollars. I really don't know for sure, but that's... If there's a panic into the metal, there is so much money out there that it's going to be impossible for, you know, a swimming pool to go into a thimble. Because basically that's the size of the symbol silver market compared to how much money's out there. And if you're looking at the palladium market, but see the problem with palladium has never really been used as money except in Russia. But still, that can, you know, people see it as a safe haven and they see a curve going up, they might just jump into it. It can actually explode in value. Fundamentally, palladium actually has a lot more going for it than silver. But silver, like I said, it's been money. And we shall see tomorrow because, uh, you know, there might be another downturn here. There might be. There shouldn't be <laughs> because people are buying the metal like crazy. Individual people, investors, uh, people in uh, industry are buying up lots of stock. But, hey, tomorrow we got a full moon. Hey, I don't know what that means. I'm not into this type of stuff, you know. But I want to say something real common sense 101. Well, how did how did the fiat system actually come about? It came about in China. How did they enforce it? They just basically threw force. I mean, they said, you know, why do people use this paper? They have to. They have to. So basically, you know, when they take away people's rights, they have to enforce their rights. So, you know, that's one reason... This stuff with the metals and the precious metals, you actually got to have your preserve your Bill of Rights, and the teeth of the Bill of Rights is actually your Second Amendment. Because there is some racketeer vested interest in actually keeping the fiat money system going. Because if you actually, if we went to, we're not going to go to simply gold and silver. 
If that happened, oh my God, it would it, all the billionaires would lose their money, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, because they don't have it. If we all went into, like, in other words, I did a calculation, like, just the oil trade globally. If you took all the mining of gold and all the oil that went out, goes out, gets produced every year in the world, and all the, all the global gold mining, gold would have to be, just to use it as a currency for trading oil, would have to be $50,000 an ounce, that high. And actually, that's not including all the other trade that goes on in the world. So we're not going into a gold standard. There's no possible way. But there could actually be a major, major calamity at one point in time. And Mark Farber, like I said, he's not actually making a speculative bet. He's assuming, but actually in a way he is, because he's assuming that there's going to be a possible major collapse in the financial system. And actually if there is, there's going to be a major, major run to gold. And there just is too much money out there to gold and gold to go into gold and silver. So you can see it skyrocket up. When that's going to happen, it could be a lot sooner than you think. It may actually be during the Obama administration. It may be. I mean, sometimes you can't see it because when things are going down, and you know, I don't like being all hopeful about things. I'm not talking that, but sometimes when things go down so fast like this, everybody's thinking it's going to take years for it to recover, but. I don't think these. I think what's going on here is not natural market forces. It's actually what's going on is total manipulation. Total. So, if the manipulation actually breaks due to physical realities, well, guess what's going to happen? The price is probably going to skyrocket very fast. Just like if you know, I know the comics is not going to run out of. Well, maybe it will. <laughs> maybe it will run out of silver. Maybe they will. Who knows? Because, you know, when I'm going online looking at coins, I keep saying out of stock or not shipping till another month. So maybe they will run out of silver. Who knows? Maybe. Because if that actually something like that happened and they proved they didn't have I know they're not, they don't really have to deliver it, but say, you know, it does look like there's a big scare that there's not enough physical silver out there and people are buying up. But maybe tomorrow, possibly, we got the full moon. On Thursday, on April, I don't believe in this occult crap either, but, you know, I mean, some people think that, you know, this is important to them, so, and as somebody pointed out, these occultists are actually moving the markets by the moon or lunar cycles, maybe we'll see a drop, and uh, 1950, who the hell knows, I mean, it's hit 1950 four times in the past, I don't know, I don't know, to me, uh, this is like uh, not something you can actually analyze too much because it's not really a market that's going by what's going on in the physical world. It's just something that's happening electronically. You know, if, if, if I can imagine if uh, Microsoft had to deal with a futures market and they says, you know, when we're coming out with the new Windows Blue, we are only going to be selling at the speculative futures price, and that's it. So you know we're going to pay you ten bucks for it or something. So we'll see. But if silver keeps going down, I don't think you're going to be able to get this stuff. There's actually going to be, you know, if this stays on like this for longer, forget about it. It's, it's really you're you're probably going to see the classic separation of uh, silver prices in the spot market. There's actually going to be a, a separation like the conspiracy theorists talked about. That'll probably occur. But anyway, we got the full moon tomorrow, so let's see what happens with the price action of silver if it drops even further. Even, But that doesn't mean you're going to be able to buy it physically. 